Good morning, everybody. Welcome to Salem Lutheran Church on this beautiful Sunday morning. It is so good to see everyone here today in person and on Zoom. We're watching later on YouTube. We are so grateful for your presence together this morning. A big thank you to Mark for leading us in our music today and, for, and to Brenda for leading us in our um, hybrid portion of the service. We are lucky to have incredible leaders in this community. You continue to notice that we are without our pastoral intern Menzi, who continues to be in Eswatini or Swaziland, his home country, and he still plans to be back at the end of the month and then spend another about three weeks with us before concluding his internship. Um, there will be a collection that is ongoing to give him one final farewell gift and a going away party, although it might be pretty brief, unfortunately, due to COVID, um, but that is after worship on February 20th. Speaking of things after worship, we have our annual meeting after worship on January 30th. Um, the racial justice statement that we are hoping to approve is already available. There are some copies 
immediately to your left out of this store and um, online copies available through our um, eblast and um, parish visitor newsletter as well. And then the annual report in full, including a proposed budget for next year, will be available Thursday in the eblast and will have printed copies available on Sunday, a week before this, um, the annual meeting. This Friday at 10 a.m. downstairs in the lounge will be the prayer and coffee gathering. So please note that rescheduled date. So it's this Friday, 10 a.m. for prayer and coffee with whoever would like to show up. It is not exclusively to one age demographic or anything of that nature. All are welcome, but it's a time to be together, to share some prayer concerns, do a short devotion, and enjoy some coffee and a breakfast treat. This particular one will also include thinking through how to um, evolve it and grow it um, as necessary in this time of COVID and for who Salem is these days. One other um, unfortunate thing to announce is that longtime Salem member Milt Schmals has passed away. So um, he had been living in a, an assisted living facility and you know most of us have been getting sporadic updates and um, so yeah he passed away it was Thursday is that correct yeah I believe end, end of this last week um, we do not have any arrangements or plans made for memorial service but please stay tuned on that front um, and we'll make sure everyone knows and is invited to celebrate his life grief his passing and comfort one another any other announcements that I'm forgetting? Anything, Zoom folks, anything that I'm missing? Well, today's worship will include Holy Communion, and most of our liturgy and songs will be from this red book, the ELW. If it says ELW in a number, those are the top right-hand corner numbers, so those are our sung portions. And if it has a P in front of it, indicating page, those are the lower left-hand corner numbers earlier in the book. Most of the, the spoken parts, though, are printed in the bulletin for us to follow along and join in together. Okay, with that said, let us dive in to our opening liturgy as printed in the bulletin. Now gather together in grace and mercy. We confess the ways we have fallen short of your commands to love you and love each other as individuals, communities, and systems. Beloved, God sees you fully and forgives you completely. God grants you new life to love and serve in joy. Thanks be to God, amen. Now we'll sing our gathering song, hymn number 525.
one day they're going to invent a mask that goes on and off better with glasses. Let us join together in our prayer of the day. Let us pray. Lord God, source of every blessing, you shored forth your glory and led many to faith by the works of your Son, who brought gladness and salvation to his people. Transform us by the spirit of his love, that we may find our life together in him, Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. All right, the first reading is from 1 Corinthians, the 12th chapter. Now concerning spiritual gifts, brothers and sisters, I do not want you to be uninformed. You know that when you were pagans, you were enticed and led astray to idols that could not speak. Therefore, I want you to understand that no one speaking by the spirit of God ever says, let Jesus be cursed. And no one can say Jesus is Lord except by the Holy Spirit. Now there are varieties of gifts, but the same spirit, and there are varieties of services, but the same Lord, and there are varieties of activities, but it is the same God who activates all of them in everyone. To each is given the manifestation of the spirit for the common good. To one is given through the spirit, the utterance of wisdom, and to another, the utterance of knowledge according to the same spirit to another faith by the same spirit, to another gifts of healing by the one spirit, to another the working of miracles, to another prophecy, to another the discernment of spirits, to another various kinds of tongues, to another the interpretation of tongues. All these are activated by one and the same spirit who allots to each one individually, just as the spirit chooses. 
the word of the Lord. Holy Gospel according to John, the second chapter. Glory to you, O Lord. On the third day, there was a wedding in Cana of Galilee, and the mother of Jesus was there. Jesus and his disciples had also been invited to the wedding. When the wine gave out, the mother of Jesus said to him, they have no wine. And Jesus said to her, woman, what concern is that to you and to me? My hour has not yet come. His mother said to the servants, do whatever he tells you. Now standing there were six stone water jars for the Jewish rites of purification, each holding 20 or 30 gallons. Jesus said to them, fill the jars with water. And they filled them up to the brim. And he said to them, now draw some out and take it to the chief steward. So they took it. When the steward tasted the water that had become wine and did not know where it came from, though the servants who had drawn the water knew, the steward called the bridegroom and said to him, everyone serves the good wine first and then the inferior wine after the guests have become drunk. But you have kept the good wine until now. Jesus did this, the first of his signs in Cana of Galilee, and revealed his glory, and his disciples believed in him. This is the gospel of the Lord. Praise to you, O Christ. Beloved siblings, grace to you and peace from God, our creator, and from our Lord and Savior, Jesus Christ. Amen. A lot of the last... 20, 30. okay, a lot of my life has foggy memories. I kind of have a hazy sense of what happened in um, various years and moments. And if maybe my sister or my spouse or a friend mentions something, okay, everything comes flooding back and it's like I can kind of reimagine re and re-enter that situation. But on the whole, it's very fuzzy. But this memory, this memory is as clear as day. I remember my wedding day, it was rainy. And when I say rainy, I don't just mean like it was a sweet little rain on your wedding day, like when you think of, oh, how cute and quaint, it rained on my wedding day, now I have good luck. No, there was a tornado that touched down just north of the Twin Cities. I think that's extra good luck. But I remember having to be outside for all of these wedding photos and we were just like getting sprinkled on and then we would start sweating and it was just uncomfortable and we finally got back inside the church, the church where I grew up, the church that was very cold that day but in a really enjoyable way. And then finally the time came for the ceremony and I had about five pastors involved in the ceremony because I was a seminary student and a big nerd who mostly has pastors for friends. One of the pastors was Kirsten, my spouse's dad, who led Holy Communion, and it was one of the most sacred and beautiful moments of the day. Another was one of the pastors from my childhood who, who uh, ended up marrying us. And then another one, he did the photography because he had left the, uh, that congregation and couldn't marry us, but he still wanted to be involved and happened to be quite the photographer. Another pastor that was involved was Pastor Meta Herrick Carlson, who's now at a church um, in South Minneapolis at Bethlehem Lutheran. And she preached for us. Meta stood up and with the microphone cutting in and out, preached one of the most profound, beautiful, and yet simple sermons that I remember. 
We read this text, and she preached about how in the midst of all of the planning, in the midst of the exhaustion, in the midst of things running out, whether it's energy, whether it is space, whether it is the wine itself, that when God is involved in your life and your relationship, you are surprised over and over again with abundance. And not just like the like digging deep and you find a different kind of reserve, but transformational abundance where there was scarcity now is more than enough. That's what wine does in this story, or Jesus does with wine in this story. And that's, she said, what God was going to do with love and patience and kindness and attention in our life together. I'll never forget it. So when we step into this text today, I can't help but begin in that same place. That when we think there is not enough, whether there's not enough money, there's not enough time in the day, there's not enough hope to go around, there's not enough unity, there's not enough jobs, there's not enough houses. Jesus shows up and doesn't just speak a word of abundance, but makes abundance real and tangible in our lives and in the lives of everybody. In this story, it's with wine, like a lot of wine. But Jesus says that this is not just because of the wine, and the, and the gospel writer reminds us that this is so that we might experience God's abundance of grace, grace upon grace. And if I were writing this, I'd really lean into that. I'd be like, grace upon grace upon grace upon grace, so that the word grace is abundant on the page and in our ears. The grace of God for you and for our neighbor and for the world knows no bounds. And the call for us in this text today is that like the servants and like that chief steward, you, we together on Zoom, in person and beyond, you are stewards of God's abundance. You are stewards of God's abundance. This abundance that God shows up and brings forth that transforms a situation and community, you are the ones who help make that real and tangible and tasty and smell wonderful in the people's lives. God's abundance is, yeah, it's of wine, it's of grace, God's abundance is also known in justice, in hope, in room at the table. God's abundance is also financial. God's abundance is for freedom. God's abundance is for love. When I think of the abundance of God's love and stewarding that love well, of course, especially this weekend, we cannot help but think of the beloved and powerful Reverend Dr. Martin Luther King Jr. In his life and in his words, in his relationships, he made this abundance of God's love known through nonviolence, through many sermons, and through the entire way that he helped shift and build, of course, never alone, a civil rights movement. Now we, and when I say we, I mean me and the white church and really this whole dang country have regularly been guilty of weakening the love and words of Martin Luther King. So when I say that he has been a steward of God's love, it's not being a steward of like the butterfly feeling that we get when we love. It's not being a steward of just like, oh, buddy, buddy, hands around each other's shoulders kind of love. Martin Luther King was a steward of God's fierce, organized 
resistant, powerful, muscular love. The love that transforms relationships and systems. That's the kind of abundance of love that God has for this world. And that Dr. King and so many in the freedom movement stewarded well. It's that love, that abundance, that you are now invited into sharing and stewarding at the same time. Okay, I don't know if you can catch, can the Zoom see this all right? Oh, that makes sense. Yeah, the text will make it hard. On your way in, depending on how early you showed up or late you showed up, there was this board that says, what are your gifts? If you did not fill out this, it's okay, but now I need you to, to holler out a gift that you have. And be loud because you have a mask on. If you didn't ha have something on here, what is one gift you have to share with the world? Something that you are good at, something you love doing, something that is a gift. Passion or compassion? Compassion. It's good you can't see too closely in case I spell stuff wrong. The Zoom folks can know. Patience. More in the chat. Friendship. I need at least one more because I know our numbers. We should have more on here. Kindness. That's a great one. When Paul writes about all of these gifts that we are given, no one has all of these things, and yet, as one body, we are overflowing with gifts. Positivity, cooking and listening, basketball, listening, basketball, dancing, vision, compassion, math, friendship, listening, inventiveness, yes, repair, patience, juggling, gymnastics, dancing, cooking, kindness, music, being helpful and trusting, hospitality, cooking, building things, food and music, and I know more. I'm getting that down. Singing and music. And love, of love of kids. Singing. Music. When we wonder, what does this abundance of God look like? What does it feel like, smell like, taste like? It is when these gifts that God has given to you your parents or community have shaped and you have held and embraced and hopefully shared, when these gifts are shared widely, God's abundance is known. When you invite others to learn and grow in their gifts, God's abundance is known. When you start to build community and mission and change systems because of the ways that you are faithfully following these gifts, God's abundance is known. God's abundance, this is a redundant statement, so bear with me, English majors. God's abundance knows no bounds. And yet in this world, there is still such a prevailing sense of scarcity and so much lack because we collectively and the systems we have built, we have kept too much for ourselves. We have kept other people out. We have refused to share our gifts and we have not paid attention to the gifts of others. God's abundance is real, it is transformational, and it is for everybody. What does it look like for you, for Salem, and for this whole dang world of ours to celebrate that abundance, 
to get out of the way of it, and even to steward that abundance, making sure it is known widely and deeply. Because is that, it is that abundant love, that abundant grace upon grace, that abundant justice and peace and freedom that will make a home for everybody, that will help shape beloved community as Dr. King talked about, that will begin to usher in a new creation, God willing. Thanks be to God for this abundance. Thanks be to God for all of your gifts. May we share them with abundant boldness and generosity. Alleluia, alleluia. Amen. Now we'll continue with our prayers of intercession. Each petition will conclude with, Lord, in your mercy, please reply with, hear our prayer. And there'll be one petition where we open up prayers for healing. Please speak those people and places aloud that are in your life or in the world that are in need of healing when that time comes. And Brenda, please read aloud those um, people and places who are put in the chat as well. The spirit of the Lord is poured out upon us in abundance. So we are bold to pray for the church, the world and all that God has made. By your spirit, Lord, activate within your church gifts of faith, of healing and prophecy, as well as all of those that we celebrate and name today. Unite those who profess your name across congregations, denominations, geographic boundaries, and so many other dividers. Open our hearts to recognize and celebrate surprising miracles. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Your creation reflects your generosity, Lord. Bless farmers, migrant workers, orchard keepers, ranchers, and all who tend to the abundance of the land, including those whose, who this land belonged to in the first place. Protect food and water sources from destruction. May we treat them as siblings, 
that all can eat and drink and be satisfied, living in mutual interdependence. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. By your spirit, O God, grant wisdom, knowledge, and discernment to those who held leadership positions at any level, particularly in our city, Minneapolis. Direct policymakers toward compassionate decisions that build up safe and just communities. Lead all authorities in seeking and serving the common good, not their own will. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. As Jesus provided generously in a moment of need, provide generous gifts of healing for all of those in need this day, especially Salem, Salem's homebound, Don, Sonia, Marion, Maria, Mieta, Hudson, Jeanette, Sharon, the family of Milch Schmals, and all those people we lift up before you now, silently in our hearts or spoken aloud at this time. Mark, Cindy. As you bring healing, Lord, provide abundantly for all who are hungry or thirsty, all who are seeking shelter, and all who seek peace. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. You see us, Lord, for who we are, and you take delight in us. Embrace those struggling with self-worth, wrestling with self-identity, or facing significant life transition. May we at Salem and in your greater church, Lord, be a place where people can bring their whole selves to not just be reluctantly welcomed, but to be embraced and celebrated for who they are. Remind us that nothing, nothing can separate us from your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord, you bless us through the gifts, the spiritual gifts of the saints who have gone before us. We give thanks for the life of Martin Luther King Jr. and all who have modeled the way of courageous faith. We give you thanks for Malcolm X, for Bell Hooks, James Cohn, and so many more people in and outside of the faith, Lord, who have fought, who have worked, who have taught, who have loved toward justice. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Since we have such great hope in your promises, O oh God, we lift these and all of our prayers to you in confidence and in faith, through Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. Now I invite you to please stand as you are able, and the peace of Christ be with you always. Please share a sign of peace with one another, and I'm asking you again, do it in a way you haven't done it in a while, with a hand motion, or an awkward wink, or a word of, of love. Now, as we prepare for the Lord's Supper, let us pray. Holy God, gracious and merciful, you bring forth food from the earth and nourish your whole creation. Turn our hearts toward those who hunger in any way, that all may know your care, and prepare us now to feast on the bread of life. Jesus Christ, our Savior and Lord. Amen. The Lord be with you. Lift up your hearts. It is right to give our thanks and praise. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is indeed right our duty and our joy that we should at all times and in all places give thanks and praise to you, almighty and merciful God, 
through our Savior Jesus Christ, who on this day overcame death and the grave, and by his glorious resurrection opened to us the way of everlasting life. And so with all the choirs of angels, with the church on earth, and the hosts of heaven, we praise your name and join their unending hymn. In the night in which he was betrayed, our Lord Jesus took bread and gave thanks, broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, take and eat. This is my body given for you. Do this for the remembrance of me. Again, after supper, he took the cup, gave thanks, and gave it for all to drink, saying, this cup is the new covenant in my blood, shed for you and for all people, for the forgiveness of sin. Do this for the remembrance of me. For as often as we eat of this bread and drink from this cup, we proclaim the mystery of the Lord's death until he comes again. And now gathered into one by the Holy Spirit, let us pray our Lord's Prayer in whatever language or version you are most comfortable or following the words on the page. Our Father who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us this day our daily bread and forgive us our trespasses as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom and the power and the glory forever and ever. Amen. Today we are communing like usual by coming forward via the center aisle. We don't have an usher, so please um, let uh, usher yourself and keep a little bit of distance as you are able. Then when you come forward, you'll receive a small piece of bread and either a cup, a small glass of red wine from the outside circles or white grape juice from the inside. Lowering your mask, please consume both. And then raising your mask, please put the cup in the small basket in the front as you go back to your seat via the outside aisle. The table, oh, there will be music. Um, so please join in while you are waiting or upon returning to your seat. The table is prepared, all are welcome.
And now may the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ strengthen you and keep you in his grace. Amen. <clears throat> oh Lord, we give you thanks that you have refreshed us through the healing power of this gift of life. In your mercy, strengthen us through this gift of faith toward you and in fervent love toward one another. For the sake of Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. Now, before receiving the final blessing, again, a big thank you to Mark and to Brenda, and thank you all for participating and sharing your gifts. May you not forget that you have spoken these gifts al aloud and shared them. May you share them even more widely and boldly, trusting in God's abundance for all of creation. And now may the Lord bless you and keep you. May the Lord's face shine on you with grace and with mercy. May the Lord look upon you with favor and give you peace. In the name of the Father, Son, and Holy Spirit, one God, Mother of us all. Amen. And please stand for our final song. It's, you might be dancing, so you want to stand and dance. <clears throat>